Hello, and thank you so much for taking the time out to listen. Today we are talking about government corruption. And for some of you individuals, you also wanted to talk about uh, some things related to the uh, government um, and how money is being wasted. Uh, taxpayer money to be more specific. So we're going to try to address uh, some of these concerns in this particular audio as the Lord leads, because when we are getting God involved, you never know what God is going to reveal before the end of this message. So please do stay tuned and let us begin. So at the time of this recording, I'm going to use this volcano eruption um, as an example Hawaii is experiencing this volcanic eruption but leading up to this eruption were some warnings back in October now here we are in November okay but then even before the volcanic eruption there was back in September prosecutors in Hawaii who had unsealed court documents that had accused the owner of a Honolulu company that provided wastewater services and supplies of bribing, okay? So there was a bribery case. And then some things that have increased between September leading up to November was a closer look at Hawaii and some public corruption which has undermined the faith of the public trust, okay? Matter of fact, Honolulu Civil Beat, civilbeat.org says, public corruption directly undermines faith in Hawaii's government. Enforcement of civil and criminal laws is a necessary step to help cultivate democracy and restore public trust by Robert Harris. This article was written November 27, 2022. It is an op-ed piece. And he says, put it simply, a healthy environment depends on a governmental system run with integrity. He goes on to say, for that matter, most public policy issues such as health care, improving education, or strengthening the social safety net depend on a fair governmental system. For a democratic system to truly work, it must serve in the public's interest. With the public corruption charges recently brought against two state legislators and several county employees, many have become disillusioned with government. Now, if I'm so busy looking over here at volcanic eruptions, right, my attention is not paying attention to what the locals are dealing with when it comes to public corruption. Now, was this by design? Hmm. Some have reasonably adopted a vote the boogers out attitude or use this news as a reason to disengage from the democratic process, such as not voting in the most recent election. This disillusionment, while disappointing, is not surprising. Elected officials and state employees are supposed to serve and act on behalf of the public at large. Public corruption directly undermines faith in our governmental system. As the executive director and general counsel of the Hawaii State Ethics Commission, uh, the uh, writer says he was recently asked if my job was to help maintain public confidence in government. He said his knee jerk response was to say no. And he said that his job was to advise state employees about ethics and when necessary, enforce the state ethics code and the state lobbyist law. The ethics code includes laws relating to, listen to this, the acceptance and reporting of gifts, confidential information, fair treatment, the prohibited misuse of official position, conflicts of interest, state contracts, and post-employment restrictions along with financial disclosure requirements. He says that last year, the commission responded to 851 requests for advice from state legislators, employees, lobbyists, and members of the public. The hardworking commission members and staff additionally investigated 123 complaints and resolved, listen to this, 10 charges publicly. Okay, now that's an example of Hawaii, right? But then when we take a look around the nation, there's all sorts of things that go on. Okay, the Lord, Lord Jesus, he is on the move with exposing from your house to the White House. So the most corrupt states in 2022, 
All right. This is according to the worldpopulationreview.com. Are you ready? Mm. Well, looks like there is a lot of information here. So we're going to break this down. So in a perfect world, we wouldn't have to worry about corruption. We could rest assured that our local state and federal governments look out for their citizens' best interests. Unfortunately, many nations worldwide deal with corruption, including the United States, according to the Corruption Perception Index, the CPI. The United States is the 25th least corrupt country. Although the United States may not be as corrupt as many other nations globally, there have been some notable scandals and evidence of corruption throughout the years. In some states, this is more prevalent than others. Mm -hmm. All right, so I can hear in the spirit. Get to the states. All right, we're going to talk about 10 states, okay? And this is because they got the most going on per capita. So, Wyoming, 84.56 per 10,000. Vermont, 77.33 per 10,000. Alaska, 50.13 per 10,000. North Dakota, 47.48 per 10,000. Delaware, 45.62 per 10,000. Rhode Island, 39.77 per 10,000. South Dakota, 37.73 per 10,000. New Hampshire, 34.54 per 10,000. 10,000 Montana 32.63 per 10,000 and Maine 29.22 per 10,000 and you thought it was going to be those popular states that we always hear about right there's always some type of you know dramas and traumas and people getting shot and blah 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 yeah it's those (laughs) quiet states those ones that nothing really goes on around here Uh uh-huh yeah well Lots of corruption going on, apparently, in those states. Those are top 10, okay? Top 10 that are dealing with all sorts of convictions per capita, okay? Yeah. So when you think about this sort of thing, you say, okay, God, so I live in a state or community or my own household, lots of corruption going on. And so there's some confronting, there's some fighting, there's some arguing, there may be some lawyers involved, some police officers, Jesus help us all. Okay. How did it even get there to that point? Because somebody had a thought because there was that evil little seed within that says that I could get away with this. I need a few helpers. And so next thing you know, you get caught up in or someone around you gets caught up in and wants you to help. Mm. Okay. Help hide the evidence. Help, you know, me by saying this and doing that. Oh, some of you all, you know, you've been called upon to do these sorts of things and you felt troubled in your spirit because this is the mother, the father, the sister, the brother, the cousin, the aunt, the uncle, the grandmother, the grandfather that's asking you, but... How much do you hate those people? But I don't. Mm. You see, the Lord, he says that if we're going to be walking with him, right, there comes a point when, yeah, we got to forsake mothers and fathers. We got to forget about, you know, (laughs) what you did for me back in the day. We're talking about corruption. We're talking about shady individuals. We're talking about people who they want you to take the fall. Okay. There's no... Oh, I'm just struggling with this. I remember somebody wanted me to do something illegal years ago. And A, money, right? Trying to tempt you with a nice, you know, payout. But God was with me. I looked that woman in her eyes. I said, no. But you could get this and you could get that. No. And then if that didn't show back up again with a relative who wanted to move product, I said, okay, is this legal product? (laughs) Is this product that we're not, you know, having people walk around here like zombies? What kind of product? Oh, these are just a uh, bath decor and, you know, some home goods. I said, oh, okay. I said, and your license, right? Your business is licensed to sell these goods. Well, um, I um, started hesitating. I said, uh-huh. So I started asking other questions, right? Like any person who, you know, wants to build a partnership Okay, so how long have you been business in business? Why did you, you know, decide to go with these home decor baby items, uh, bath items, you know, this sort of thing? Who's your connections? You know, do you have paperwork to show that this is legit? Blah, blah, blah. This man couldn't answer any of those questions without hesitating, coming up with excuses. And where exactly are these items stored? 
And then I found out that he was let go from a job because of what? Take one guess. <laughs> if you guess stealing, you're correct. He was stealing. And thank the Lord once again for me not going along with his offer, opportunity, right? <laughs> corruption i'm telling you while everybody's looking over there and oh government this and government that you got your own family members that are trying to get you to do some things through your name around in some conversation no, i don't think she's gonna be able no, no that one right there gonna give you problems don't even bother to ask her because you know she she's a you know a straight arrow you know things like that <laughs> jesus <laughs> She's going to call the popo. She's going to be a snitch. That's what she's going to be. Don't you even open your mouth and ask her. <laughs> Exporting corruption. 2022. Top trading countries doing even less. Check that out. Doing even less than before to stop foreign bribery. Despite a few breakthroughs, multinational companies bribing their way into foreign markets go largely unpunished. Huh, fancy that. And victims' compensation is rare. Okay, now this is an article on transparency.org, October 11, 2022. Our globalized world means companies can do business across borders, often to society's benefit. But what if the expensive new bridge in your city has been built by an unqualified foreign company that cuts corners? Huh. Yeah. Or if your electricity bill is criminally inflated thanks to a backroom business deal. The chances of this are higher if you live in a country with high levels of government corruption. Public officials who demand or accept bribes from foreign companies are not the only culprits of the corruption equation. Multinational companies, often headquartered in countries with low levels of public sector corruption, are equally responsible. This is why some of your U.S. businesses decide to go off somewhere, you know, in another land, because, hey, you know, the laws aren't as strict, you know, and we can be able to produce a massive amounts for less the, you know, whatever the product is, for less of, uh, you know, the monies that we would have paid had we kept this company in the United States, you see. 25 years ago, the international community agreed that trading com countries have an obligation to punish companies that bribe foreign public officials to win government contracts. Ooh, somebody's like, government contracts. All right, you're getting close. Yeah, you see. You get all sorts of individuals that come up with these great ideas, right? These things that, oh, we can be able to help your community if you, you know, uh, if, if you get these people involved, you know, we'll be able to do this and do that. There's always some promises, right? And then the next thing you know, you find out that people, their salaries are being cut or they're being laid off because they were just seasonal employees. They were only meant to come in for a little bit or companies that come up with all strategic ways to get rid of people. So this way it doesn't look bad out there in uh, the media world. <laughs> Layoffs once again. Oh, no, no. We just figure out a way to just get rid of everybody. Right. And say that they, you know, just didn't work out. You see, wherever there's a benefit, wherever there's some type of, you know, kickback monetarily, there goes the script. OK, there goes the narrative. This is how we're going to orchestrate this in order to get that done. And some of you all, you have been, unfortunately, the collateral damage. You have been the victim. Some of you all, you've been the whistleblower. Some of you others, you can't say anything right now because you got an investigation currently going on. OK. You know, when there's corruption, you know, when there's bribery in some of these organizations, they have a way of learning how to uh, get some people to toe the line, you see? Oh, let me look up some strategies. Okay, well, the last time this worked. Yeah, okay, well, let's try that again. All right, well, it's not quite working this time. All right, well, whatever you can come up with, just so long as this doesn't go, you know, to mainstream media, okay? Because we can't afford that. 25 years ago, the international community agreed that trading countries have an obligation to punish companies that bribe foreign public officials, right, to win government contracts, mining licenses, and other deals, in other words, engage in foreign bribery. Yet few countries have kept up with their commitments. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Okay, so 
Let's keep going. Our new report, Exporting Corruption 2022, rates the performance of 47 leading global exporters, including 43 countries that are signatories to the Organization for Economic Cooperation and Development, OECD, Anti-Bribery Convention, in cracking down on foreign bribery by companies from their countries. Four leading non-OECD convention exporters that are also assessed include, check this out, China, India, Hong Kong, SAR, and Singapore. The results are worse than ever before. Mm, you see? <laughs> so when you got all this sort of corruption and, you know, shady dealings going on, you also start to see things happen in the retail sector. You start to notice some things when it comes to going on websites and trying to order some items. You start to notice that there are these distractions, once again, narratives, stories that are formulated because somebody's mad at somebody because there's a war between families. Mm. Okay. <laughs> Global highlights. Transparency International has been independently tracking major trading countries' progress in enforcing against foreign bribery since 2009. <laughs> Lots of stuff has happened, too, since 2009. Mm. Our biennial reports score countries based on their performance at different stages of enforcement, from the number of investigations commenced and charges filed to cases concluded with sanctions. Now, let's just stop and use our good old-fashioned common sense, shall we? If you file a case against a person, right, a country, a government official, and they got their flying monkeys... Do you really think they're just going to go, okay, yeah, sure. Yeah, go ahead and launch your investigation. We'll just sit quietly, mind our own business while you guys, you know, snoop around, you know, send all sorts of folks to test the spirits. Yeah, okay. You know that there's going to be pushback. You know that people can't help but exact revenge, okay? So there's this number of investigations right that took place over a four-year period we then classify them by four enforcement categories active moderate limited little or no the picture has been gradually getting worse since our 2018 study hitting a new low this year wow corrupt trans transnational networks of businesses and their enablers leave a trail of harm pushing out competitors mm -hmm. bypassing regulations and draining public budgets of resources only Switzerland and the United States are now in the category of active enforcement as Israel, uh-oh, yeah, <laughs> and the United Kingdom have dropped from active to moderate enforcement. Major non-OECD convention countries remain in the little to no enforcement category, including China, the world's top exporter, and India, which still has no legis le uh, legislation criminalizing form and bribery. In this group of 38 countries, accounting for 55% of all global exports, foreign bribery abuses go unpunished. So let's think, right? Remember, oh, empty shells. Remember, oh, you know, uh, this issue, that issue, the reason why you can't get your items. Mm -hmm. You see. Since 2020, only two countries, Latvia and Peru, have moved up a level while nine, including Denmark and Italy, have dropped. The COVID-19 pandemic has undoubtedly posed a major hindrance at every stage of enforcement, from investigation to prosecution. But in many countries, the downward trend predates the crisis and the current picture raises significant concerns. Now, put it all together. It makes sense, doesn't it? You got to think like the criminal mind. Oh, you know what? Y'all, you, there's this uh, crisis that's going on. You know, I mean, we can't get some things done. Uh, you know, we got this crisis. <laughs> oh, I can't get those items over to you. Mm, competition. <laughs> Competition's going to suffer. We got to make this money. All right. How do we get our products over to the country? All right. This is what we're going to do. You see? Lord Jesus. I know someone's like, it's just too just messy. You know, I mean, I just wanted to play fair. I just wanted to get into my industry, you know, <laughs> in the righteous way. 
And then you come talking about corruption and bribery and political officials and people getting all sorts of handouts and scratch my back and I'll scratch yours. <laughs> I just want an honest to goodness business. I know. I just want to work for an honest to goodness business. I know. But see, God, he exposes these sorts of things. And when you start paying attention closer to the workplace that you're in, closer to some of these so-called I love you type of family members, but we know better. When you look at things from a nationwide perspective and why people are making these sudden moves like buy, you know, buying up Twitter and all that came with it, Elon Musk was doing some exposing before buying Twitter. Okay? So He's all distracted with Twitter. You're all distracted looking at what Elon Musk is doing with regard to Twitter that you forget about what is really going on there behind the scenes. You know, the Tesla huh, Biden up. Oh, I don't see you, Tesla. Don't know you, Tesla, but I know these other EVs and I'm the union president. Mm -hmm. You see, once again, another interesting example. You can take just about any product that is on its way up, that may have just slashed competitors, you know, uh, founders, owners, investors growing in leaps and bounds. And then suddenly there's the scandal. Suddenly there's someone talking about, oh, there's a tax issue or, oh, you know, um, this problem arose because of and you're over here following that rabbit trail and meanwhile what's really going on behind the scenes is somebody robbed somebody blind or somebody didn't give them their money you know or take care of what they claim they were going to take care of or somebody shook hands with the devil okay while they shook hands with uh, the godly you see Oh, yeah. Shady dealings. And so however you can get the information out there, you do what you need to do. So why not buy uh, an app where you could be able to tell the business, <laughs> expose corrupt organizations, you see? Hmm. So when we think about monies, right, and saving money, where can government save money? Okay. Uh, this particular article was posted May 11th, 2022 on the U.S. Government Accountability Office or from the U.S. Government Accountability Office, GAO.gov. OK, now they say, how specifically can the federal government save billions of dollars and also improve the way many programs operate? You've come to the right place. And so they issued this uh, report on the website that says what government federal government can do to potentially save billions of dollars now i bring this up because anytime you start talking about saving dollars okay whether it's in your household whether it's at the workplace whether it's our government if we're saving dollars who exactly are we saving dollars for mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and how much money are we saving and what are we going to go without in order to save this money? Ah, you see. And if someone in the family or at the workplace or in government doesn't like what they're going to miss out on or who they're going to anger as a result of this saving money, that idea isn't going to be nothing more than just an idea or it may gain some momentum, but then we need to slow this thing down because it's not working out like we thought. And now you're making some of our criminal criminals upset. Of course, they wouldn't call that, call them that, but we know better because now you're taking out of their pocket in this effort to save money. And these are the guys that had my back. These are the guys that are my ride or die. So we got to figure something out. Mm. But we're going to talk about some of these ways, right? To save some money. Over the past decade, we have helped the government improve its operations and save about $552 billion, including $35 billion identified since our last report. And then my question is, is that, okay, great. Woo, you saved a bunch of money. But where is that money? you know, that you save, did it get reallocated, redirected toward, you know, <laughs> the average Jane, the average Joe? Doesn't look like it. Looks like prices have increased for the average Jane and the average Joe. So after a while, it's like, mm, 
what's the sense in saving all this money when the rich is only going to keep getting richer? I mean, I saw this as a child. I'm like, you know, we got some relatives that speaking on behalf of their, you know, spouse. And they're talking about, oh, I got to save money because, you know, my husband or my wife and I got to save money. Okay. And then in the end, where did that money go? Did it go towards uh, higher education for the children where they don't have to pull out loans? Did that cost savings go toward, you know, generational wealth of some sort where now you got the younger people who own houses just like you do, okay, and own their own vehicles just like you do? Oh, no. So where did the savings go? The savings went to individuals who got well past their lifetime in monies to sit back and relax on. Mm -hmm. I mean, I went and done my share of research on family wealth. Okay. My mouth dropped. So all this crying out loud over the years about saving money. The plan was never to give to the generation that was coming along, even though they talked that talk. But they sure didn't walk it. You see, and so when we look at this from, you know, government's perspective, you are saving all this money and what are you doing for communities that we're driving in? What are you doing, you know, in terms of knocking buildings down and building up new ones, dealing with the potholes? dealing with outdated internet. I mean, I can't tell you how many places I've gone to just in Georgia where, oh, I'm so sorry, the internet is slow. I'm so sorry, you know, uh, guys, hang in there with us. The internet is slow. <laughs> Saving money, right? Ah, uh, Lord Jesus. So where can efficiencies and cost savings be found to help the government be a good steward of taxpayers dollars and resources each year we review various federal programs and activities and so they go on to say that the department of energy could save tens of billions of dollars by adopting different ways to manage and contain radioactive waste uh, next point contracting leaders at federal agencies could potentially save billions of dollars annually and improve the performance of their procurement organizations by using tools that measure cost reduction Next point, the Department of Defense could potentially save millions of dollars by better managing fragmentation in its food program and strengthening current initiatives to reduce improper defense travel payments. <laughs> Congress passed the Weapon Systems Acquisition Reform Act of 2009, which provided guidance on how DOD develops and acquires weapon systems, resulting in cost savings of approximately $180 billion from 2011 through 2017. The Department of Education took steps to improve its cost estimates for student loan income driven repayment plans, which resulted in savings of approximately $43 billion through 2020. The Department of Veterans Affairs evaluated and used strategic sourcing, leveraging their buy power by using existing contracts for goods and services, which resulted in cost savings of about $10.8 billion from fiscal years 2013 through 2017. Okay, so in this effort of trying to find out where we can save money, they will break down different parts of the same goal, which is fragmentation or work on similar, you know, what was already, you know, done similar programs, what have you, uh, similar goals or provide similar services, you know, where there's the overlap, work on the same activities or provide the same services like duplication. So you're just going down the line. Okay. Where are we right now? Are we really saving money? Is there a similar program where we said the same thing? Let's go back. Let's revamp. Let's break this down. All of that. You do this sort of thing at your workplace. If you work, you know, with numbers, with budget, right? You are annually shopping for contractors who have uh, lower pricing than your current contractor. You see, because I don't want to renew a contract if I can find 
you know, some cost savings. Some of you all, this is triggering for you in terms of let me take a look at credit cards, APR, how much am I paying? If I can get a reduction or move credit over to a new card, let me take a look and see where I can get a cost savings on the groceries. Um, you know, can we be able to find some coupons on the internet for the things that we're always buying? Let me take a look and see if there is some type of program based on my income where I can be able to save on electricity, gas, water, you see. So these sorts of things you do, legitimate, right? Honest, not shady, not telling lies, you know. But there are those individuals that, once again, when it comes to government, you just tell them this or you just... Um, you know, fix some numbers in such a way so that we can get what we want. Well, isn't that unethical? Isn't that illegal? Uh, not really. You see, when you've got individuals who have historically done this sort of thing, I mean, you look at Biden, he's been in the game for a long time. <laughs> and that's what made me hesitant about him as well as Trump. Look, these people, they know a thing or two. How to bamboozle, hoodwink, pull the wool over your ass. The fact that there's so much money put into any official in mainstream media is a red flag for me. Once you get that ballot and you see all these names that are regular Joes, right? And you're doing your share of research and you can't find too much information about regular Joes and regular Janes and, you know, average people. Why is that? Because there are certain groups that have backed officials, put them all across the internet, all up in your face, and they know that they're going to read the script the way they want them to read the script. That these are the ones who we have chosen for you while making you think that you got some kind of power by voting for people that have been plastered all over media. Meanwhile, no. You were talked into. You were persuaded. You went with what is popular. Of course, they don't want average Jane or average Joe or an outspoken person or a truth seeker, or a truth teller or somebody who, you know, knows how to dig deep in the research and expose corruption. They don't want those people leading, running organizations, opening up cases to investigate where exactly our taxpayer money is. And when you start talking like that, they figure out ways to distract you so that you're off getting yourself involved with some project that has nothing to do with why you really can't stand government. You forgot. For some individuals, you forgot. Oh, what was it again? Because <laughs> you're so distracted with some other projects. You see, your organization is putting out all sorts of fires. And meanwhile, you overlook that government contracts are being rearranged in such a way where your organization isn't going to get a government contract and is going to have to tell everybody that I'm sorry this or that we are no longer in business because they don't want that little man to one day grow to be a bigger man and be competition. Am I making it plain for some individuals? And when you see it, you expose it. When you are a part of the problem, and not the solution, you stop being a part of the problem and you start being the solution. When God himself is showing you in various documents, videos, audios, all sorts of corruption here, there, and everywhere, everywhere, bribery, state by state, city by city. Oh, so you still want to vote for these people who they put in front of you, who they're, you know they're not going to get the job done. You look at the people on the ballot who they don't have deep pockets, but you know that they're going to speak for you, 
even if you are able to find at least some information. I mean, I literally had to spend hours and hours and hours trying to find information. Jesus, I had to find, I had to spend hours and hours trying to find information on the no names, the ones that aren't out there in mainstream media. And that's where I cast my vote in the past was these people who you've never even heard of them, but I know that they're going to speak for me and speak for the things that I care about. I know that they have been known to be whistleblowers and expose some foolishness and no, they're not going to win. I know it, but at least government knows that I'm not going to sit up there and be like, okay, sure. It's okay. It's all right. I'm just going to go with, you know, whoever you put in front of me. Uh-uh. And that's where some individuals have been deceived for far too long. Don't you get tired of voting for people that, you know, they're just going to keep on saying the same old, same old? You see? So, I don't like the, I don't like the system. I think the two-party system, four-party, five, whatever, I think it's archaic. I think that something needs to be done to change it. In my mindset, I can't figure out exactly what that is. I haven't prayed and asked the Lord either for direction on, you know, how to build up a system, you know, where our voices can be heard and that he who has a deep pocket isn't in front of us, forcing us to have to vote for that one, you see? So, Anyway, do share in the comments, you know, what you've noticed about the corruption out here in these streets and about the, you know, savings uh, that we could potentially have all across the board when it comes to taxpayer dollars and so forth. I thank you as always for taking time out to listen. And I thank the listener who suggested this audio as well. Blessings to you.